We're on. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so science and spirituality. So, okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on with coronavirus and science. And um, I should just give a, a sort of a risk warning that I'm not a medical doctor and seek the advice yeah. of, of your medical doctor uh, before doing anything if you've got any serious health conditions. Um, okay, with that warning out of the way. So, uh, you can say everything in here is my view. So, uh, I'll talk about it on an interesting level. I'm a hypnotherapist and, and people have been studying multiple personality disorders. And if you go, if you read any, you know, most of the spiritual authors out there um, uh, who, have a, who have familiarity with science, all of them, always talk about a few different things. One of them is like the uh, experiments on people with, uh, testing multi people with multiple personality disorders. And multiple dis personality disorders have the thing of they can flip between personalities radically. Mm. You know, they, they go from one extreme personality to another extreme personality within a split second, which is quite an quite a extreme phenomenon. And this has been found if you go into the research. Like you can have, uh, as they flip from one person, radical personality to another, the colours of their eyes can change. So one might have blue eyes, and when they flip into, let's say, one's called Jackal, I shouldn't have said that, should I? <laughs> and the other one's called Hyde. And, because um, they won't take it seriously now, will they? Um. But anyway, so Jackal, you know, um, and actually Hawkins did some re research on, um, on, on, on the spies, you know, the, you know, the, um, what do you call them? The double spies that, um, you know, that, you know, Russia will send a spy to America to get some, get some stuff and pretend to be with the Americans. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, quite, you know, so, quite a few of them have what we call uh, uh, multiple personalities. Uh -huh. So they can, oh, anyway, I'll, I'll go into that a bit later mm -hmm. on. So, because we're talking about uh, belief systems, not about that. That's different. So, yeah. so one of them can have blue eyes and be, uh, let's say, blue eyes and non-diabetic. And then when they flip to the other personality, they can be diabetic with green eyes in a split second. So one of them is like when they have sugar, they're having the shakes. Um, and the other one can just eat as much sugar as they want and it doesn't affect them. So that just shows that um, everything, you know, science would say, I, I'm a biochemist, would say, and also I was a pharmaceutical analyst, I was, I was that, but um, would say that, you know, the genes are real, uh, so the genes are real, and you might have, say, and also that sugar is real, you know, so you're diabetic, and, and the reason you're diabetic is because if we give you sugar, um, you become, you know, your, your, your sugar levels spike. So actually, no, it's not true, because if you, if you look at multiple personality disorders, when, when, when they flip from the diabetic version to the non-diabetic personality, they can eat as much sugar. So actually, you can see the belief systems flipping. You know, as they flip the, the belief system, I believe diabetics. So this sub-personality believes in diabetes, and so it just expresses that. You could say the belief system creates the gene, shall we say, mm. and then the gene then creates susceptibility to sugar. But that wasn't, you know, genes are not real, and sugar is not real. There's no power in genes and sugar. The, the power comes from the light of God. And it's the belief system, the, so the light of God then can create the gene, and the gene then can create, you know, a sense of religious sugar. So actually, there is no such thing as sugar, or there is no such thing as genes. Everything is coming out of the belief system, or the karma. So I hope that's clear. So, believing in, you know, if you just believe in genes, and believe in sugar, and diabetes, that would, you know, through uh, Hawkins' work, that is, that has a calibration. Science is, is below spirit, is below the spiritual domain. So it's mainly coming out of uh, mental belief systems, and measurements, and that the world is real. Does that, if that makes sense? So, you know, uh, I'm going to do a study, a scientific study, and I'm going to everything that's visible on my instruments. I'm going to class as real, and. Uh, 
and, and, so, and therefore I'm going to say this is truth and reality. Um, so that doesn't calibrate very high. That's like Newtonian. What I can see and measure is real, and that's it. Not very high level of truth. And uh, if you look at um, the placebo effect, you know, like uh, you'll see that actually the power of belief, you know, you could say that drugs really have the power, or you could say that belief in the drugs and belief in doctors has the power. Because, you know, if you do studies, and doctors know this, scientists they have the placebo effect. So you'll, in, in science, they'll have what's called uh, double blind studies, because they know that if you just give people pills and say it's going to work for you, like a, a percentage of them will work, mm. and there's nothing in them. So, um, but what, what if the truth was actually it's just the belief systems which are working, mm. and actually there's nothing in science? That would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> mm. So and the scientists wouldn't like that one. <coughs> um, so, okay, and um, so the thing with, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, 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 no, it was Einstein. Einstein, and so what the spiritual literature likes to talk about is the Heisenberg Principle, mm. you know, because scientists just like to look at the world as if it's real. You know, the world is real. So, you know, uh, the reason why um, you've got the coronavirus is because this person sneezed on you. That's why you've got the coronavirus. So that's like, that's what the Course in Miracles would call a magical belief system. Mm. You, you believe that the power of someone sneezing on you has, ha is real. It's not real, that's a magical belief system. Now, lots of, we can have collective belief systems, or what we call collective insanity, which is uh, discussed in Lesson 14. So I might have my personal belief systems, which are, which are just unique to me. So I believe, like, I don't know, if I don't leave a feng shui toad on the door, then I'm gonna have bad luck the whole day. You know, So that could be my personal belief system. But, we can all have, like in a society, there can be collective belief systems or there can be global belief systems where we all agree to certain things. So, but those are just beliefs. No, so, so Einstein was kind of like, well, the world that we measure is real. And then Heisenberg did the experiment where if, if an observer, uh, I'm not exactly, I'm not so much a physicist, more a biochemist, but anyway, so I might get some corrections. But when the observer or the witnesser witnesses some atoms, they change between atoms and waves. Uh, and, and that's the thing that happens. And there's a difference if someone observes it than if someone doesn't observe it. But then that brings in the thing of, well, the observer has power. And that's not measurable. Just you witnessing something is creating an effect. So, and then Hawkins, you know, took it uh, a step further because a scientist is not very spiritually evolved. They, you know, they believe in science, they believe in rationality, they believe in measurements, not very evolved. So when a scientist um, observes some atoms, it's going to, have, going to have limited power. The light of consciousness, the light of God coming through a scientist is limited because it's got no belief systems. But what if a saint observes something? Or what if an enlightened teacher observes something who's got no belief systems? So actually the power exponentially increases. You know, because science is believing that the real world is real. I should have said that. Science believed that their, their belief systems of the world is real. But actually, in truth, it, it, you know, the light, the light of God is the only real thing shining through the limiting beliefs of the limited consciousness or the collective consciousness of humanity, in short. So, um, so really, uh, so hence the thing of like, I mean, let's take Mother Teresa, who I believe was made a saint. Because, you know, the, um, uh, I think, uh, I, I could, I'm not an expert on the Catholic Church, but, uh, but uh, so I might get some corrections. But, you know, it's like, when certain things happen, you know, it probably means you're a saint, you're, a saint, you're going to get sainted. So, you know, someone has cancer, and you see the x-ray of cancer, and they meet Mother Teresa, then they have another x-ray and the cancer's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's like the miraculous that happens around saints. So you've got to understand the thing of a science believing something and you believing in medicine. And then the difference between a saint being in the energy field of a saint. And if you've got the karmic permission, like things which are born out of fear and limited beliefs can suddenly like miraculously disappear mm. out of you. That's the power of the light of God and no limiting beliefs. 
So scientists have got, are, are laid with hundreds of belief systems from science, learning the, the religion of science, <coughs> shall we say. So, so I'd much rather meet <coughs> Mother Teresa. If I had the difference, you know, it's like meet Mother Teresa, you've got cancer, or, or take the king. No, I shouldn't say this on camera, should I? Mm. But, uh, <laughs> but not the warning, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I did give a warning at the start of this. The, the, this is just for entertainment purposes. <laughs> but uh, you know, if I'd like to meet Mother Teresa, you know, the miraculous happens, and you know, I think that was the thing of um, Jesus as well. Jesus had quite a few mm. the miraculous, you know, that that goes on. So the power of infinite love. And, 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 and to revoke what is, what is really belief systems and, and guilt. Mm. All that humanity is full of is guilt mm. and limited belief, limited, limiting belief systems and guilt. Create, you know, that guilt and a limiting belief creates like nightmarish scenarios in, in limited consciousness. Mm. And like if, if, you're, if you're in front of an avatar, like in India, like if you've got the local... The problem with India, as many Indians will know, is you've got lots of... You've got lots of uh, false teachers and a few good ones. Yeah. But, um, so it's not necessarily that if you just hear of the local... T but Indians will flock to the local, you know, because it's, it's known throughout thousands of years. If, if you're a real spiritual mystic, it, to be in the grace of the presence of a mystic, you know, the miraculous tends to happen quite regularly. So that's known for thousands and thousands of years. So what are you going to do? Are you going to take a drug? I mean... I mean, I like what Hawkins says, you know, and what most Course in Miracles teachers says, like, take the magical cure and do the spirituality. Because if you're not advanced enough yet in your spiritual consciousness, yeah. um, then it's, it's best to take the pills. And there's nothing to lose in taking medicine. Mm. You know, take the med medical solution, take your vitamin pills, yeah. and do the spiritual work. Cancel your beliefs and do spiritual, spiritually elevating work. So you get... so. So, at least, you know, it could be that the drug will cure you, or it could be that the miraculous will cure you, but you're, you're sort of hedging your bets. Mm -hmm. So it's best to hedge your bets, you which know. Which is what you did. Which is what I do, yeah. yeah. With, when you, with your kidney. Yes, that's, yeah. that's perfectly so. <coughs> um, that's what Hawkins yeah. said. Um, and there's a, there's a miraculous belief system you can do. I teach counseling beliefs, which is take the magical cure and cancel your belief in adverse side effects from it. Mm. So problem with uh, doc <coughs> like what I did with my <coughs> which the, I have actual evidence for this so I can mm. talk about this on camera and if any you know and I have like evidence of my um, my blood results and the amount of medicines I was taking so I've got like after the transplant like I think 13 medication uh, which is normal you get two carry bags out of it for anti-rejections <laughs> and stuff because you're a transplant patient now that's mm. normal and you've got to take you know you've got to, you to get, take all these drugs every day uh, uh, for various reasons and complications, and then I go, okay, I'm just going to take all these pills, but they, but these, there's nothing in pills. Medicines are not real. There's no power in them. They're just nothing except my belief in them. That's the only thing. But I'm part of the collective beliefs. You know, I'm part of the collective, and a lot of us believe in collective belief systems, and I have those pre-installed in me. So if I believe something will work for me, it will work. But if I believe a pill will work, but, you know, and the doctors have got like a list of like 30, 30 side effects, you know, this will lower your blood pressure and cause 30 side effects. You know, it will cause diarrhea, headaches, internal bleeding. <laughs> you know, it's like a list of crap. <laughs> but it will lower your blood pressure as well. <laughs> so you go, well, it's, it's nice if you can pop a pill and lower your blood pressure. But that's the, you know, but... To, but then you also believe in the collective belief systems with that pill, which is going to have 30 yeah. side effects with you. So I like the thing Hawkins said was, well, pop the pill in your mouth and cancel your belief in adverse yeah. side effects. So I just did that with absolute faith. So, just put, so if I believe it, it'll work. But I don't want to believe in my belief in its side effects. So I just did that. And the miraculous happened. And uh, I went down from 13 medication to one medication in about two years, approximately two years. And I remember on that day it was the mystical. It was like something really mystical was happening. I went in, <clears throat> saw my doctor at the Welfare Hospital, my consultant, a lovely guy, really lovely man. And he said, oh, you're, you're just on one medication now. 
uh, immunosuppressant at low dose. And he says, I don't know of anyone else in the hospital as a transplant patient taking less medication than you. And I wrote this, I think, in my book, Bulletproof Peace. And I went to the nurse afterwards, and she said, oh, you're going to put us out of business. Because I'm, you know, I had, like, I'm just an anomaly that I'm mm -hmm. hardly taking any medication for a transplant patient. So it was like, mm -hmm. just pop the pills and cancel your belief in adverse side <coughs> effects. Mm -hmm. And also I believed in, like, the real power is in God. The real power, you know, like if you've had a white light spiritual experience. I'm also a hypnotherapist, but when I went to see a, a non-duality teacher of enlightenment, and I had gout and inflammation in my feet, you know, and I went off into the white light. So to be in the white light is like having a light bulb at infinity shine on you. And it's like you can't have any negative thoughts, and you don't exist. It's just like infinite light and power, which is so exquisite that this world is like a nightmare in comparison to that light, I guess, which is very exquisite. But actually, when I came out of that white light spiritual experience, what, uh, one of the things was there was no pain in my feet. I was able to walk around without even remembering that I had gout. And actually, funny enough, on a different note, I thought it was a dark day, a dark autumn day, and when I left it was like bright summer. So I, you just see that actually all these belief systems that you hold in consciousness, which are your level of consciousness, means how dark your day is, what, how much fear you see in the world, which is what the Course in Miracles would call perception. Um, and all the belief systems that you're subject to in the world, which are with it part of your own personal belief system, the collective belief system. So I don't really believe in drugs, but I will take a drug. Because if I believe, some, if I believe in an illness, mm. and, there, mm. and I believe that this drug will yeah. cure me, whether I know intellectually or not that this is crap, it will still work for me mm. until I'm at the level of consciousness by where I transcend yeah. it. So if you're, I mean, if you know spirituality intellectually, it's not the same as being an enlightened teacher. Mm. So even though an enlightened teacher can disappear cancer in a split second, doesn't mean just because they can do it, you can do it. I mean, you could do it if you didn't have all the belief, if you were at the same level of consciousness as they were at. Mm. But uh, just to know it intellectually is not necessarily the same as you having hundreds of belief systems you've not yet cleared and you've not done the work and you've not cleared your guilt. The other thing is, um, <clears throat> uh, now I'm a hypnotherapist, and actually Hawkins talked about this, you just put a belief system, put someone into hypnosis and tell them that you'll have an allergy when you, when you see a rose, and they'll have an allergic reaction when they mm. see a rose. So the rose hasn't, doesn't create the allergy, it's your belief system. Yeah. You know? So you know, a hypnotherapist can actually give you. Now a scientist would not say that. The scientists would say, you, you just got an allergic reaction and the, uh, to the roses or to poison mm. ivy. So they would look at it through the prism of science, of causality, or the course would say through magical means. The course says magic. Hawkins says causality. That power is in poison ivy or in toxins or in the body or in genes. That's causality or the magical world. Actually, that's just collective belief systems. The, the, there's nothing in all of that stuff. So, so someone who doesn't believe in that, it wouldn't affect. But if you do, it does. Mm. But actually, it's the belief system. So science has got it totally wrong. In fact, if you're... Uh, and remember, this video is for entertainment purposes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you were... If you were like, <laughs> if you were like, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I would say so too. So, uh, so if you were a hypnotherapist, you could just take the belief systems out of a person. Um, Can you, you know. hypnotize someone out of believing they have like a serious nut allergy? Yes, yeah. if there's karmic permission. You've got to understand there's also karma, and karma. <coughs> uh, Funny enough, I, you know, I, I'm a hypnotherapist, and you know, hypnotherapists know something very, very similar. It's a very interesting question to what, what muscle testers can you do. Like, you've got to respect divinity. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, like, there's karma you can't see. And actually, it's quite hilarious. Even, so, even, even um, hypnotherapists, good ones, know this. And you're taught this as hypnotherapists. Like, when you go to a muscle tester, they'll ask, do I have permission? Ask the universe, ask God, do I have permission to get this information, yes or no? Mm -hmm. And hypnotherapists, um, 
will, uh, I was taught as a hypnotherapist, you have to ask the unconscious whether it will agree to release information. Mm. So it's like, okay. Uh, the client's unconscious. Yeah. yeah, you have to ask them. Their unconscious will tell you yeah. if they'll agree with you to release the information or not, which is actually very funny. And as a hypnotherapist, you can do a lot of powerful stuff, but you still are bound mm. by whether the unconscious will let you get access to that mm. information, which is beyond the con So it's almost like similar to, it is the same thing. Like even as a hypnotherapist, you're still not God, unfortunately. So you just have to ask the unconscious. I mean, you now know that belief systems is really powerful. If you can take out a belief system out of someone, like if they believe in allergies, or whatever they believe in, or believe in poverty consciousness. You ask, um, you know, you can ask the, you know, you get signals, like lift your left finger or your right finger for yes or no, and you speak to the unconscious, or nod your head yes or no, and they're in trance. And, and sometimes you go, right, can you, can you release the reason why you're holding on to this belief system? And you'll get, like, the unconscious will say, no, I'm not, I'm not letting you know. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, so then you can't. You can't negotiate with you can't. I mean, sometimes you can, yes, you can. Yeah. But sometimes you might find it won't let you. Okay. And that's like you're not allowed to interfere. And be, even though you're, you know that if you could take it out, then you could get the unconscious to agree to release it. Now, if the unconscious agrees to release it, like you might have an allergy to, like, let's say, roses, and then you go out and for the rest of your life you don't have an allergy to roses in one mm. second rather than take antihistamine, you know, antihistamine drugs the rest of your life. But sometimes the, you know, the unconscious will block you from doing it. And that's very much like, so even a, even a, now if you are allowed to do it, if the unconscious allows you to remove a belief system. Um, How would you define the unconscious yeah. yourself? The unconscious, yeah, that's very, very easy. So you put someone in trance. Now, you're still conscious, you're still aware of what's happening in trance, but you're in an altered state of consciousness. So, the, uh, uh, we talk about beta waves, theta waves, alpha waves, yeah, that when, you, when your brain waves slow down. Now, when you're, in, um, when you're in normal consciousness, your brain waves are going quite fast. So, that's like your conscious mind is in charge. Um, and your, your unconscious mind is still expressing itself. Um, now, when you go into a relaxed state of consciousness, which is called either the hypno hypnopompic or hypnagogic states, which I used to tell my stop smoking clients because that was my specialism, um, you're in an altered state of consciousness mm. and therefore it's like your conscious mind, uh, you can speak directly to the unconscious and your conscious mind won't interfere. So it's mm. like you, and, and then you can ask the unconscious if you've got permission uh, to make changes at the level of the unconscious. Mm. Um, so it's like having, di a di you can speak directly to the unconscious mm. in, in the hypnotic state. And if it agrees, you can now make changes. You know, like consciously you want to stop smoking or consciously you want to give up a belief system and allergies. Mm. But what you can't exactly is the unconscious? Yeah, that's what I'm maybe asking. Maybe a separate well, Yeah, I think yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe another separate video. No. What, what is it? Yeah. it this unconscious has overriding permission. Mm. Is it tapped? Is it your divine? Is it your yeah. higher self? Is it your God self? Is it no, is it I would, I would, I would, I would, deep belief system? It's a deep, it's the, it's a deep belief system. So, so if it is a deep belief system, why would you not get the permission? Yeah, why would it withhold? Oh, that would be, I would say that's karmic. Karmically, you're not allowed to interfere with this individual. Um, so, you know, like when you're but doing... But if it is deep belief systems, it would be of this realm. It would not be anything to do with... Yeah, but the spirit, I would say the spiritual realm can block that off. So it's, in connect, it's, in, it's working in conjunction mm. with the spirit realm? Well, you know, it, yes. you know, like, you know, what's... As, as a hypnotherapist, um, you, can, you can go in and you can communicate with the unconscious to some extent, you can program and deprogram the belief yeah. systems within a thing. However, sometimes you'll find that the unconscious won't allow you to, uh, or won't give you information as to why it's holding a belief system, and why it won't allow you to change it. So sometimes, like when you're as a hypnotherapist, you might ask, "Is this linked to a childhood trauma?" Yeah. And then you go into that childhood trauma. Okay, the reason you're smoking. Uh, it, okay, so uh, will you speak to the unconscious? Will you give up cigarette smoking? 
and it'll either go and you've got a yes and a no signal. The unconscious will say yes, okay? Then it's just, it's just release. Uh, but usually it won't give up the smoking because there's what's called secondary payoff. Yeah. It, it's holding on to the, the belief system for a various reason. Mm. So then you have to, like as a hypnotherapist, ask the unconscious, mm. okay, can we do, we can do regression now? So there's regression, this lifetime regression, past lifetime regression. But you, you can do, normally most hypnotherapists will do regression in this lifetime. Mm. Okay, um, what is there is something associated with, okay, every time you feel fearful, you smoke, yeah? Every time you feel fearful, fearful stress, you smoke. So uh, we'll do a regression. So I'm going to count to three, and on the count of three, you'll go back to the first time you felt fearful, just like the fear you feel every time you put a cigarette in your mouth. Then you'll get, and then you ask them to play back the memory of the first time they had this fear. So they go, I was three, and uh, you know my mother smacked me around the face, mm. and uh, and and then I and then I went and I put a cigarette in my mouth, whatever it was, you know, <clears throat> mm. or peer pressure, whatever it is. Then you can do a little forgiveness process mm -hmm. to to forgive them, yeah. and then release that, and then you can ask the unconscious, are you now willing to give up cigarette smoking? They'll go, yes. Mm willing to give it up. But sometimes you might ask, you might not be willing to regress to the time when it first did it. Or you'll ask the unconscious, is there a secondary payoff? Yes. I'm not willing to give this bluff because there's a secondary payoff. So it's holding it for a reason, mm -hmm. for, for a gain. And then you'll ask, what is the gain? You can, you can do this trick called substituting. Well, can you, instead of cigarette smoking, can you have a glass of water instead? And you might say yes. Mm. Um, but but you can sometimes it might not allow you to get something it will substitute mm. it with. So those are the tricks of hypnotherapy. So you've got various mm. tools you can do. But sometimes you'll be blocked, even though you're a great hypnotherapist. Now, you don't teach this, but I really believe there's karmic reasons which will not allow you to interfere and remove stuff, mm. even as a hypnotherapist. Now, mm. this is quite an interesting video anyway. It should be hypnotherapy, shouldn't it, really? <laughs> um, and, uh, there was a great thing because I really loved it because the power is in the belief yeah. systems. Hypnotherapy is powerful, but not as powerful as a mystic. Mm. But you're getting, you're getting onto a level of belief. Like medicine is like, mm. take this drug and the power is in the drug. And the power is in the I think that that's less powerful. If medicine would work with hypnotherapy and belief systems mm -hmm. and then work with acupuncture and other spiritual modalities, mm. then the power of that combined would be more stuff. But even then, with all of these combined, sometimes you wouldn't get karmic permission. Mm -hmm. And that's mm. because the karma is just too heavy. Mm. Yeah. So does that mean um, you can, well, if, if that were the case, yeah. your unconscious, does it only allow you in some situations to get to a certain level and you can't get beyond that because of karmic reasons or whatever? So if you're trying to progress spiritually, would, it, would, it, would you hit a ceiling perhaps because you're unconscious is saying, no, you can't go any further. Yeah, I, I believe that's what I call, mm. you haven't got karmic permission. Mm. So, I mean, hypnoth I mean, hypnotherapy is speaking to the unconscious and taking out and putting in belief systems. Mm -hmm. And belief systems for me is more, more powerful than mechanical, like take this pill and believe in genetics. So that's like causality. But the belief, belief systems is even earlier because mm. the light of conscious and the light of God is expressing through the limited belief system. That's like the karma. So that's mm. even nearer to God's consciousness than working with drugs, which yeah. is further away. Right. And ascribing yeah. too much power to mm. the outside mm. world and not enough to your inner beliefs. Let's look at yeah. this drug and your genes rather than look at the belief systems you're holding in mind. So mm -hmm. for me, that's getting closer. The only thing with hypnotherapy is they don't teach... They do, I mean, some, you get spiritual hypnotherapists, like past life re uh, regression hypnotherapy. But most hypnotherapy is, is shall we say, um, doesn't look at the spiritual realm. Mm. So they have techniques, but then they'll find they'll get blocked, like the unconscious won't play ball. If you're doing like the Course in Miracles, for example, mm. can the unconscious block <coughs> you from progressing to get the full benefits of the Course, for example? Well, I mean, the... Uh, the or, or does the course you, transcend the unconscious? Well, the course, you know, he, well, here's the problem. Why does one Course in Miracles student get well in one week and another gets well in ten years? Mm. And, I mean, that's quite... Uh, the, uh, the, the reason is obvious, because of the amount of karma mm. that you've got. The course doesn't mention that, though. No. Well, of course, of course. 
Well, the Course talks about, so God did not create it, so it's not real. The Course talks about magical beliefs, doesn't it? Yeah. It talks about magic. 